Former Health Minister Dr. Zwilliam Kize could soon find himself in the dock if the special investigating unit has its way. The SIU report into the multi-million rand digital vibes communications contract has concluded that Mkize may have committed actions of criminality. The report also found that he failed to execute his functions in compliance with the constitution. The former health minister, who resigned last month, has previously said he would challenge the report in court as he believes it contains facts actual inaccuracies. Well, to discuss, uh, we're joined by the DA Shadow Minister of Health, Sibuiwe Guajube, and we'll also be joined by the head of Corruption Watch, uh, David Lewis, uh, shortly, we hope. Uh, Ms. Guajube, thank you for being with us. So, from what you've seen, do you believe, uh, does the DA believe that the health minister, who was much applauded uh, during his response to COVID-19 initially, does he perhaps even deserve jail time? Look, we are of the view there's definitely um, a, a criminal case to be answered for and that an investigation needs to happen. And that is why you will recall uh, several months ago when the issue around Digital Vibes was uh, discovered, we laid a criminal charge against um, uh, the minister and the current DG of Health, Dr. Sandy Levuteles, because we're still of the view that you know, essentially corruption in this country needs to stop becoming a political issue or something that requires a political sort of solution. It is, in effect, a crime and, and that those people who do commit, um, who do thieve over uh, public funds need to essentially be brought to book. And uh, so we definitely think that there's a criminal case to be answered for. And, uh, and that's why we've been very... Um, a resolute about getting the president to release this SIU report publicly because we are of the view that the SIU has to essentially hand over its report to the NPA so that an investigation can ensue. But, but won't, uh, if that, the president won't that happen as a matter of course? Look, I mean, the reality here is that um, it's, it's now not clear as to whether or not the SIU will await the president to make it, its report public before the next steps are followed. We know that in, in the Department of Health, the senior management there in the department are still being uh, investigated. And we know that there's a massive delay because the contents of this report have been withheld. And so that is why it's still a very important step not just in the, in, in the course of public interest, but it's an important step, in my view, in carrying out the recommendations of the report that the president needs to release this report so that the SIU can begin to hand over all of this information over to the NPA. All right, we are joined by the head of Corruption Watch, uh, David Lewis, on the line. Mr. Lewis, do you agree uh, that this should be made public? And, and based on what you know, uh, how damning is the evidence? I mean, earlier there, uh, of course, was a question mark around the minister when it was reported that the SIU was saying that his son was picking up cash uh, at garages from Digital Vibes. And, of course, it was the father in the position to offer the, the favour for that reward seemingly. But what do you know about the evidence here pointing to criminal action? Well, I, I, I know, you know, only what I've read in the, in, the, in the media because, you know, as you correctly point out, the report hasn't been released. And I think all SIU reports should be released. Now there's so much that is known about what is being said in this report that there seems to be no point in not releasing it. But, you know, quite clearly, uh, the SIU believe that there is a criminal investigation to be had. You know, they can't, they can't undertake a criminal investigation, but they can recommend that a criminal investigation be taken by those uh, qualified or competent, legally competent to do so. And it's recommended that that be done, and I don't imagine that they would have likely done that in the case of a senior minister and senior public officials. They must clearly believe that there are criminal charges to be answered. And it's not only the minister who is implicated. I mean, there are other very senior officials in the department who are implicated. And, of course, this is incredibly worrying that... Uh, that we should have a department denuded of its senior officials, but I mean, there's nothing else to be done. That we should have a department denuded of its senior officials, you know, particularly when it's in the middle of a 
public health crisis like the one that we and many other countries face at the moment. Well, Mr. Lewis, I mean, so it's always awful when claims like this come out. And of course, it's not only the digital vibes matter. There's a whole lot of PPE uh, tenders being investigated. Yeah. I understand those will be finalized by November. Uh, should we, however, be welcoming um, a, a new transparency, a, a new understanding as, as the South African public of what's going on and what is going wrong? Yeah, well, I, you know, I think that, that, you know, in the last while, there seems to be much vigor, more vigorous law enforcement action taking place, and it is to be welcomed. I mean, the SIU are really doing an outstanding job, but they are not a, uh, you know, as we've said, they're not a criminal justice agency. They can investigate systemic corruption. They can investigate cases of corruption, and they really are doing a, a, a very, very commendable job. And I think that the other law enforcement agencies seem to be acting, as I say, with somewhat more vigor and energy than they have done in the recent past. But, uh, um, yes, I mean, we must definitely welcome it. I mean, it's the only way, well, it's, it's, it's one of the critical ways of confronting corruption. I mean, there's no confronting corruption without raising the risk of engaging in corruption, by which I mean without vigorous law enforcement, without the risk of going to jail. Yeah. Ms. Kwakube, uh, minister, former minister Mkise claimed like most ministers, and we've also heard it from MECs, uh, when these dodgy uh, awarding of, of contracts uh, come to the surface, uh, that he was not uh, it really involved. He was at an arm's length. He was not the person who awarded it. From what you know, how would you describe his involvement in, in the awarding of the Digital Vibes contract? Look, I mean, now we, we have seen the SIU's affidavit to the Special Tribunal, which really details uh, in, 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 in very clear terms uh, where the minister would be liable. And they clearly, from what the SIU has stated, were instructions from the minister to his senior management about the appointment of this company or the individuals who ran this company. Um, we also are, we are also aware of the fact that the minister had a duty um, in accordance to the oath of office that he took to not only um, adhere to the PFMA, but also to protect the constitution and the public purse. And um, from what we can be able to tell from the little that we've been able to see from the SIU, he didn't, he, he absolutely did neither. And so really, I think it would be, it, 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 is, it is not possible for the minister to claim that either he did not know or he was at arm's length. Yeah. From what we've seen, it seems as this, these people. It seems as though these people were personally connected to him. These were close associates of his. These people were the people who essentially were awarded um, over 140 million rand of public money, a contract of that much, when we now know that was in fact an inflated price yeah. uh, for the amount of work that they needed to, be, to do. And these are people who are directly connected to him, who have essentially exchanged money with his son and members of his family. So, and so it's not possible for the minister to claim yeah. that he somehow was distant from all of this. So, so very quickly, please, because we're running out of time, but uh, what would the DA do better? Is there a way to do this better? Because it's often claimed that even if the person at the top, the political principal, uh, doesn't sign on the dotted line or doesn't say you will award this contract uh, to whoever in writing, uh, lower rung people often do the bidding of that person. They know they have preferences and, and they may uh, award the contract to somebody that they think their boss likes. How do you, how do you deal with that situation? The reality is that uh, the laws like the PFMA are very clear about the fact that you need to separate politicians from the administration. What is just simply happening is people are exploiting loopholes in that whole system. And you, you get DGs and senior management who are now essentially captured by politicians to do their bidding. And the reality is that if we do, the only way to fix this is to send people who do corruption to jail. And if once we start creating a track record of people who get punished, sent to jail for their crimes, then we will start to see that being a deterrent of this kind of uh, right. public theft. 
All right, thank you for your time tonight. Uh, that was the head of Corruption Watch, David Lewis, and uh, the DA Shadow Minister of Health, Siviwe Guajube.